7,000 kilometres west of the French coast lies the Caribbean part of France, the islands of Guadeloupe. They belong to the Northern Antilles or the Leeward Islands. Each island has its own culture and traditions, which have been marked by Spanish, Indian, African and French influences. The two main islands of Guadeloupe, Grand Terre and Basse Terre, are separated by a 50 metre wide sea channel. The landscape of the two islands is completely different. Grand Terre, in the east, consists mainly of limestone with long, beautiful beaches. It has a dry climate and is the centre of the tourist industry. Basse Terre is a mountainous island with extensive rainforest. The volcano, La Soufrière, towers over the city of Basse-Terre and at 1600 metres is the highest point in the Eastern Caribbean. The French Overseas Department offers the highest standard of living in the Caribbean. The laid-back Caribbean lifestyle is combined with French elements. Traces of the Arawak, the original inhabitants of the Caribbean islands, can still be found in the petroglyphs carved into stone. They've been dated to around 500 BC and show the written language of a lost culture. The Arawak were a peaceful and highly developed race of fishermen who came originally from South America. Christopher Columbus described the Arawak in his diary as having such innocence and generosity with what they possessed that no one would believe it who hadn't seen it with his own eyes. In around the 9th century, the Arawak were displaced by the Caribs, who also came from South America. They called the island Caruquera, which means island of the beautiful waters. When Christopher Columbus landed on the island in 1493, he gave it the name Guadalupe. In doing so, he fulfilled a promise he'd made to some Spanish monks, that he'd name an island after the pilgrimage site Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe. Eh bien, lorsque Christophe Colomb arrive effectivement en Guadeloupe, eh il arrive d'abord il arrive à Marie-Galante. C'est l'île qui est juste en face. I don't know where exactly Christopher Columbus landed, but the first place he visited was Marie Galante. From there, he must have seen the extensive mountain range and the many waterfalls of Guadeloupe. Then, he travelled to Basse Terre and stumbled upon the Caribs. The Caribs were a warlike people. The original inhabitants of Guadeloupe, the Arawak, were killed off by the Caribs. It was a very brutal period for Guadeloupe. Christopher Columbus didn't stay on Guadeloupe as he had other tasks to pursue. Guadeloupe is small and he wanted to discover the larger islands. Guadeloupe, St. Kitts, St. Lucia and Martinique were all too small. The Spanish were interested in the larger islands. La propriété va alterner entre les Français, plutôt les Français et les Anglais, moins les Espagnols. Les Espagnols vont se contenter des grandes îles. In the following decades, the Caribs successfully defended themselves against the Spanish. However, in 1635, the French were able to colonize Guadeloupe. Farmers from Normandy, Brittany and Charente settled on the islands. The French colonizers set up plantations, harvesting mostly coffee and sugarcane. The French also brought in African slaves to work the farms. This period in the island's history is reflected in the sugarcane plantations on Bus Terre and the nearby rum distilleries and farmhouses. Yes. 
Ben déjà, la première chose, la canne à sucre pousse très bien aux Antilles. Il faut savoir que quand Christophe Colomb est arrivé aux Antilles... Sugarcane grows very well on the Antilles. When Christopher Columbus arrived on his second voyage to the Antilles, he brought a variety of plants with him. Sugarcane grows three centimeters a day. There's too much sun in South America, and in other countries it rains too much. Sugarcane only grows well when there's not too much sun or too much rain. It's like that on the Antilles. Climate here is ideal for growing sugarcane and making rum. L'humidité qu'on a aux Antilles, il faut pas oublier qu'on est dans un pays tropical humide, est excellent pour la canne à sucre. Et donc c'est l'idéal pour faire du sucre, c'est l'idéal pour faire du du rhum. Although the distilleries have been in operation for centuries, the Caribbean's best rum is to be found on Guadeloupe and Martinique. As opposed to molasses rum, rum agricole is distilled directly from freshly pressed sugarcane juice. The rum from Guadeloupe and Martinique is special. In the rest of the Caribbean, the rum that's produced tastes like the rum you get all over the world. But here, we make rum agricole. Rum agricole is made from the juice of the sugarcane, whereas molasses rum is made from molasses. Rum agricole is usually consumed as white rum. White rum has to mature in stainless steel barrels for at least three years. C'est-à-dire vieillissement pendant trois ans minimum en fût de chêne. In Guadeloupe, white rum is used to make the drink tea punch, the most popular aperitif in the Caribbean. The rum is mixed with sugarcane syrup, a little cane sugar, lime, and if necessary, some ice cubes. Alors, comment on fait un tea punch? Tea punch is the most popular aperitif on Guadeloupe. When you invite friends around, then you serve them tea punch as an aperitif. Some women prefer other kinds of rum drinks, like cocoa punch, but the men drink tea punch, real tea punch. Slavery made sugarcane one of the world's most important crops. The history of slavery and colonialism manifests itself in the architecture of Guadeloupe cities. The ruins along the river in the city of Le Moule bear witness to the original French settlement. They're the remains of the first French capital in Guadeloupe. As a result of the French Revolution, slavery was abolished in 1794. However, it was reintroduced by Napoleon in 1802 because of a shortage of cheap labour. Fort del Grey towers over the city of Basse-Terre. It's named after the mulatto Louis del Grey who committed suicide in 1802 together with his army of black farmers when outnumbered by Napoleonic troops who'd been ordered to reinstitute slavery. The saying, better to die free than end up on the guillotine, comes from him. Slavery was finally abolished for good in 1848. Contract workers were hired, mainly from India, to farm the plantations. The people who live on Guadeloupe today are mostly descendants of African slaves, or have a connection to African slaves, Amerindians or white colonists in their ancestry. The centuries of intermingled cultures can be seen in the local clothing, food and music as well as the Creole language. Je vais vous donner un mot, le mot créole. Nous sommes créole. Et derrière ce mot, je n'hésite pas à dire qu'il y a une civilisation. Nous sommes une civilisation créole. On ne peut pas I'd like to say one word to you, the word creole. 
We are Creoles. Behind this word is a whole civilization. We are a Creole civilization. We can't describe this melting pot, as our English friends call it, any other way. It's a mystery. And the mystery is a Creole mystery. Our friends on Martinique think that they're the whole world. They say that they're the world with many other parts of the world. But in this country, there are French, black slaves, I mean the descendants of black slaves, there are mulattoes who are a blend of different races, there are Indian immigrants and Syrian Lebanese immigrants, and now a new wave of Chinese migrants has arrived. This small country has an exceptional capacity, and the different ethnic groups live together without any problems. Et ce petit pays a une capacité d'accueil extraordinaire. Alors politiquement, ça se traduit aussi. On a vu des maires. Politically, it's the same. We've had an Indian, a Syrian Lebanese, and a white mayor. All ethnic groups are represented in the politics of this country. I come back to the word Creole. We are a Creole civilization. La population noire est majoritaire et c'est normal qu'ils soient majoritaires dans les élus, mais je crois qu'il n'y a aucune diversité. Je reviens sur ce mot « civilisation créole ». Nous sommes une civilisation créole. Creole cuisine is a mixture of European food with African ingredients, oriental flavors and produce from the Caribbean. Creole markets sell fish and seafood directly from fishing boats. Fruit, vegetables and spices are piled high on the small market stands. savoir que ces produits sont quand même il y a un suivi euh, moi par rapport à mon expérience à travers le monde. Loop, we use produce that's been grown in a controlled environment we live on a french island and so there's only one rule that the taste must be exceptional i've traveled around the world and have noticed that the same produce has a different taste everywhere the taste is particularly good on Guadeloupe. The produce from these islands is healthy and tasty. So it's important for me to use the produce from here. D'avoir des produits qui sont vraiment issus du terroir, qui ne vraiment qui qui répond à demande. Et le goût, vous avez comme dégusté, vous avez vu, ça, il y a autre chose qui ressort, il y a autre chose. Joel Kishner is the world champion in Creole cooking. In his small kitchen, he prepares typical local dishes. Before dinner, a strong tea punch is served as an aperitif. Yes, it's a tradition. It's part of it, but it doesn't have to be a tea punch. There are so many cocktails that we can offer. Nous avons une variété de cocktails que nous réalisons. Ce mélange ethnique. Creole is a blend of influences from different cultures. The starter that I cooked was more African but most of the food was Indian. It's a meal that was half Indian and half African. That's the authentic cuisine. What we have here is Creole food, a cuisine that picks up different influences. What I served was Indian Creole. The colourful clothing is also a legacy of the African, Indian and Spanish past. Black garment means that you are sad. At that time life was very hard and therefore people dressed in colourful clothes. With the colours you feel better immediately. 
the colors come from the time of slavery, hence the African, Indian and Spanish influences. Après l'esclavage, l'arrivée des Indiens, des Espagnols, donc ça représente un tout. A wooden book was once used by slaveholders to summon their slaves. The jewellery is made exclusively of gold and has the same history as the clothing. Ben, cette richesse était, encore on revient à l'esclavage, c'était pour copier ces femmes. The jewellery also comes from the sad slavery past. The white women always carried a lot of jewellery. The black women wanted to copy this. So after slavery was abolished, they started buying golden jewellery, bit by bit. They wanted to show that they also had something, that they belonged to a higher class and that they were also someone. Colourful clothing needs a suitable headdress. The manner in which the headscarf is tied gives an indication of whether the wearer's heart is taken. Of a headdress with one point in Guadeloupe, on Martinique they have up to three different points. A point on the right side means that the heart is still free. A point in the middle means that I am an independent woman who is still available. And a point on the left side means that the heart already belongs to someone. Traditional clothing, which has its origins in the slave period, is presented at street festivals accompanied by guoka music. These are the costumes for the shows. For different shows, there are different costumes. And not only that, the colors of the costumes must also complement the skin color. Guoka is traditional drum music, which has its roots in the time of slavery. The name comes from the Creole words for big drum, gro ka. This instrument is central to Guoka music. The ka is the drum. It's both the symbol of revolt and of the alienation of culture. It serves as communication and an expression of communal life. When the Africans were brought to Guadeloupe, they had no instruments. The music which they had in Africa were the drums. So they stretched the skin of a goat over wooden barrels in which goods from Europe were delivered to Guadeloupe and they converted them into their own instruments. This music was forbidden for a long time because it had a lot of power. It was dangerous for the colonial rulers. Black people also sang during their work. The songs tell stories of pain, love, joy and work. Guoka forms the basis of the music of Guadeloupe. Because of their influence on this music, African dance and drumming continue to have great significance for the Creole population. I 
la Caraïbe là, comme ça. Depuis autant de temps là. Everywhere in the Caribbean, you can hear music. In Martinique and Guadeloupe, we have special drum music, which is only played on these two islands. Our entire body moves automatically to this music. It can also make us fall into a trance. We move, we dance. The drums speak with us and are also a part of us. Quokka isn't just music, it's also a dance, a game, the joy of life, a way of life and a reminder of the people's African ancestry. This music is a tradition on Guadeloupe. Our children should know where it comes from. The music, the dance, the costumes, everything comes from the time of slavery. Afterwards, we were free. Until this day, we have this tradition. And today, it's up to us to educate the children in such a way that they know where this tradition comes from. It's a passion. The dance and the music have been in my heart since I was a child. Today I have arisen and I wish that this culture will also be preserved. This music helps you to live, it gives strength. Earlier, life was very hard. Today, life is not so hard anymore. But still, today, you get courage and strength through this music. Christopher Columbus remained long enough on the island in 1493 to give it its name. Since then, people from vastly different places have lived on the French island and have had a lasting influence on its life and culture. Mm -hmm.